Hey guys, Auspiciousy here and welcome to episode 32 of the Mice on the Trader series. We are going to advance into week two here. Um, we do have Big Vito coming in. Um, we've also got Terry Funk to team up with American Dragon as well, uh, as well as Ricky Steamboat coming in as our new road agent because obviously we lost. Uh, who do we lose? How have I already forgotten? It was Harley Race, wasn't it? Yeah. We did lose Harley Race, who retired. So as a result, we're essentially without a road agent, or at least one of our sort of higher quality level road agents. Anyway, week two in the road to Starcade. Got some, um, some interesting plans for, for tonight's show, as we'll accept Ricky Steamboat, we'll accept... Big Vito, who's going to come in as a heel, uh, and then Terry Funk coming in as a face as well. Uh, so today's hired. Uh, one thing you guys did want me to do, uh, I can't remember exactly who it was, but somebody wanted me to show you a little look at the creative meeting at the moment. So franchise players, have got Booker T, DDP, Canyon, and Shane McMahon. Our next big things, I think they're all the same except Test or Andrew Martin has been put in there. Uh, hot prospects, I think that's pretty much the same with Rey Mysterio being at the top. You've got Talk the Talk, Dusty's in there, Jerry Lawler's in there, Eddie Guerrero's in there, Showstoppers, Eddie at number one, actually betting out Rob Van Dam, which is interesting. Uh, and then Rey Mysterio Jr. coming in there as well. Ring Generals, Eddie at top, beating out Lance Storm, which I think is very interesting. And then again, Rey Mysterio. Uh, who's hot? We've got Buff at the top there. Um, Purely for the fact that he's essentially winning all of his matches because we're not really putting him into any sort of important storyline or like important feuds uh, because of his morale penalty. So um, I've actually got big plans for Buff. I've got like a whole new, well, it's I wouldn't really call it a new gimmick for him, but it's a, it's a bit of a change um, and it features more of like a, I don't want to give too much away because I obviously want to save that for the episode that we do uh, actually change him, but it, it's going to have him with uh, two women um, and we might bring in another woman onto the roster to sort of be his manager um, or maybe use some of somebody we've already got um, potentially as well. Anyway, let's, uh, let's keep advancing. We still got another two days here before Nitro. I uh, just want to say thank you for all the support as well on the recent videos. You guys are absolutely smashing it. And um, I'm very appreciative of everything that you guys do. Um, yeah. Um, ooh, MCW have been given a warning that they will face bankruptcy if they don't turn it around. And they still reject our takeover. I think that means that they've got exactly one month one month left to, to turn things around. Interesting. They're still pretty far off actually going up to small size where they would get a, a decent amount of, of money responses. Um, so we, we might be on there. We might be on. Um, anyway, let's just keep advancing. We got Volador Jr. there as well. Could be another good one to bring in for the uh, cruiserweight division. Uh, we will go for the Baltimore Arena in Maryland here for tonight's show. Uh, we got no sort of backstage incidents there either. So let's start booking. Uh, main event going to be a tag team match with our main eventers in this one. Um, so it's going to be Booker T and Rob Van Dam. Teaming up against the heel team of our other two world title contenders. Uh, of course, Canyon and Eddie Guerrero. Uh, we'll give this one 16 minutes. Needs to be a decent main event. We've, we've got a lot of big players in there. Uh, and then we're going to give Eddie the win. RVD is going to be the loser. We're going to keep Booker Strong. Obviously, he's the world champ. We want to... Keep him as strong as we can. It's going to be called, yeah, called Slow Built, Tainted, 
Um, outside interference finish onto Rob by Chavo, leading to a victory there for Eddie Guerrero. Um, actually, I might do that as the finish. Yeah, so let's have RVD be attacked by Chavo for the finish. All right, yep, Chavo, RVD, perfect. Book is strong. Nice. All right, uh, so we'll check an angle in before that one as well. Let's run with... Let's run with Eddie. Uh, we'll do that one early, actually. Let's let's go Booker and RVD. And we'll have Eddie and Canyon be off screen. So a bit of success there for these two. Do that one six minutes. That'll go pre-match. I think we'll finish off with the match because that's going to be a really high angle like pre-match anyway. So I think we're fine. Um, going a little bit further back, we're going to have CM Punk taking on, or is he super crazy? Again, it's, it's face versus face, but this one's perfectly fine. Uh, and this one, we're actually gonna give the win to CM Punk. Open, script, decisive. Uh, we'll have a botched interference finish on this one as well. We won't, we won't put this one before the main event, but I just wanna get this match booked because I had it in my head and it's actually a really good way of giving CM Punk like a big victory on TV. Um, that'll elevate his popularity so we can try and put that TV title on him. I think I've sort of maybe changed my thoughts around it as well. I know a lot of you guys um, have been dropping me comments about what, what we should maybe do. So we're going to still run with four competitors. So a fatal four-way for the TV title. It's going to be CM Punk, AJ Styles, uh, Samoa Joe, and then we're going to chuck Vader in there as well. So all four of those guys, they have been sort of feuding around each other for like the last two or three months. But it kind of does like work out pretty well. I I feel like anyway. So yeah, good little thing there. Um, interference onto crazy because uh, it's a botched interference and it's going to be psychosis his tag team partner. So that's a good one. Um, and we'll advance our storyline for them as well, which is perfect. Uh, even pre match we might do a, a CM Punk. Uh, do we go CM Punk super crazy? Actually, instead of that, let's go Vader, CM Punk, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe. We'll just go all four of them into this one. Um, we'll go Menace there for Vader. I think we'll try and go Entertainment for the other four. Three, sorry. Um, and we need to adjust storylines as well, because I can't remember what, exactly what I was doing with Vader. Um, but I'm going to change my mind. I know it's... A little impromptu, but it's sort of just it's a backup plan to have Vader in the match because I don't really want the match to incur that penalty at Starcade. I think it'd be a real sort of injustice there to, to have it run that way. Uh, up next, we're going to go with... Uh, where are we? Um... The Rhodes family, they're going to take on base team of Lash LaRue and David Flair. A little bit of uh, history there for Dust, uh, Dusty Rhodes and David Flair. Obviously, Ric Flair being his father. Uh, we'll give Dustin the win. Actually, we'll give Dusty the win for this one. Try and build up a little bit of momentum for him as well. Um, and we'll have Flair be the loser. And then I think next week I want to have Dustin versus D'Lo. I think that'll be a really good match. Cool. Um, we'll actually chuck that one a little bit further down. Um, I might even make that storytelling. I like it. All right. Uh, we need to have the debut of Big Vito. 
Um, I don't think... Oh, he's got 30. Still unimportant, though. Um... He's, got, he's actually got the, the full-blooded Italian gimmick as well. Uh, instead of doing it that way, we might just do an angle. Let's just do... We'll do Johnny the Bull. Um, we'll do Guido. Go Tracy, and then we'll go Big Vito at the end. So I'll go the double entertainment. I don't think Vito can talk, but I'll double-check that just in case. And then we need to chuck Vito into that storyline as well. So let me change the storylines here a little bit. Uh, we're going to remove Jamie Noble out of there. Uh, it was originally going to be Buff versus Vader. So remove Vader out of there. I know it kind of messes with that storyline a little bit, but we weren't exactly doing anything with them. They were sort of just thrown together um, essentially to give Vader and off something to do for Starcade. So I think this this just it works better, especially with all the storylines we've had recently with all these guys and of course the the victory CM Punk got over Vader as well. So I like it. Uh and then finally we will add in where is he? Big Vito. Can cut a promo. The big man can cut a promo. Okay. I think he's actually got better entertainment skills than both uh, Guido and Johnny. So, interesting. Johnny the Bull's pretty over now. He's well and truly a mid-carder at this point. Um, I want to get Guido up there as soon as we can too. Uh, which which will all, it'll all start next year, really. Um, and I think a Guido versus Rey Mysterio could be a really good storyline that we run for a couple of months. Uh, with him going after the eventual Cruiserweight champion. Spoilers, but I think that's the, the direction I want to take it in. Uh, what was I doing? Um, I don't remember what I was doing just then. I was looking at popularity, I know, but let me change this around. We'll go Big Vito there, so it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, and then Entertainment. All three, nice. And then Tracy can just be in the background as uh, a bit of extra muscle. I like it. Hopefully we can try and, because realistically both Vito and Guido uh, are very, very close. Um, I was gonna add another tag team for fully blooded Italians, but I think I'll, I'll just wait. What I will do though is we'll add him into the stable, so we get the stable. Actually, we'll we'll do that at at the pay per view as well, because it, it's all going to culminate the pay per view. Um, and actually, chuck in. Uh, instead of that, we'll, we'll we'll do a match. We'll do a match. Uh, so let's have Hugh Morris, because that's their opponents being fully blooded Italians, uh, and we'll actually give Hugh a win, so he can take on Jamie Noble. Um, seeing as we're, not, we're essentially not using Jamie Noble at the moment, so it's fine. Um, script will make it decisive. Uh, and then we'll just have a distraction onto Morris by... Do I want to make it Johnny the Bull, or do I want to make a Big Vito and have them take on each other? I think I want to make a Big Vito, and then for next week... Uh, we can essentially have another singles match with Morris versus Vito. Um, I like it. I like it. So uh, I think we'll go like that. We can maybe have a Morris angle onto Johnny the Bull as well, like a back and forth type of deal. Or maybe even just Morris and Vito. Yeah, let's do that instead. But we'll rock the, the double entertainment there for Vito as well, because he he's probably closer than Guido to, to getting up to recognizable. And the angle with Morris might actually help him gain a little bit of popularity. Perfect. What else have we got? Uh, US 
probably do an angle there with, yeah, let's do this one. We're gonna have Eddie, Chavo, and they're gonna be discussing Rob Van Dam and Booker T. They can both be off screen. It'll probably lower the ratings a little bit for the, at least for the world title, maybe not the United States, but rock with those ones. They're off screen, that's perfect. Get Ricky Steamboat, Red Agent, that one. Um, and we'll just make this one a, uh, we'll go locker room angle. Just so it's changed up a little bit. I know that the freestyle angles, while it doesn't exactly matter what I'm typing in so much, because I obviously verbalize everything and explain it. Um, it just looks a little bit nicer in the, in the layout here of the, the match card, uh, the show card, sorry. All right. What else? Uh, haven't really done anything with the kingdom yet, but let's have Sean O'Hare match. Obviously Jerry Lawler is going to be on to commentary as well. Um, who will he verse? Maybe Jablonski, but then I don't really want Jablonski injuring him, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, I was thinking maybe a PCO. Let's do PCO. So O'Hare is going to get the win. It'd be a nice decisive victory there. Uh, and then I might move that one above it. And I'm going to have an angle with Jerry onto Sean O'Hare. Uh, we'll rock the double entertainment for this one. Uh, we'll actually have O'Hare respond. Uh, let me type this one in. I can not fat finger it. Um, so he wants Sean O'Hare to align himself with Lawler's new stable. Easy. Um, and I'll explain exactly what uh, what the response is as well. Uh, so that'll go before the match. Uh, what else have we got? Let's just run a tag team match with... Um, how many appearances do I have for, for Jerry? Not Jerry, Lola. Um, it's Terry. Um... Got four appearances. Okay, let me just calculate that. I think that's literally to Starcade. All right. Let's rock with a tag team match. We're gonna have American Dragon teaming up with Terry Funk. Um, who will they take on? Maybe, actually, Young Dragons, perfectly. Perfectly placed for a tag team match. Uh, we'll give we'll give American Dragon the win. Want him to to again build up a little bit more momentum. Part of the reason why I've, I've brought someone of the uh, experience level of Terry Funk in. Uh, and then simply before that match, we'll have Lance come out and cut a promo onto American Dragon. I'll have Dragon be off screen for this one. Oh, actually. Have him be on screen because he's going to come out for his match anyway. Um, that's perfect. Go Ricky Steamboat there. That a pre-match perfect again, continuing that storyline. What else have we got? Yeah, Dream to Nightmares done as well. Psychosis Super Crazy. It's essentially done as well. Um, DDP Jeff Jarrett's kind of the uh, the last one that we really need to do. So 
Uh, who do we, who did we do last week? Do we have a match for either of them? Not sure if we did or not. I'm sure we had an angle, so let's let's do a match. Go, we'll go DDP because I think you did lose last pay per view. So Diamond Ellis Page can take on. Um. How many wants to do Jablonski? It is risky though. Let's we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it, uh, and then we'll have a nice easy angle with uh, Jeff Jarrett. Uh, go Jeff Jarrett before that. Actually, we'll just chuck both of them in. Honestly, I don't think there's really any issue with doing that so we'll try to uh yeah I had a feeling they they wanted to be unscripted for that one anyway we're pretty much there i think we need yeah we're too high at the moment so we're still at 58 percent we need more angles um haven't done anything for the cruiserweights Um, don't think we can fit a match and an angle in so what I want to do is maybe just have have an angle and we'll go with Shane Helms, Rey Mysterio and we might just have them team up in a tag team match against uh Felix Skipper and his tag team partner. Kid Romeo, that's it. Uh, so we'll go double entertainment for those two guys. Um, so we we'll have Helms and Mysterio. Uh, discussing their match at Starcade. Then we have Romeo and Skipper interrupt. Match is booked for next week. Cool. All right. Uh, we'll go Ricky Steamboat for that one as well. Um, they can grab a little bit of success because they are involved in their own tag team title storyline too. Um, and we would not be penalized. So let's fix up the matches we need. We need a Wild Brawl and a High Spots will steal the show. Uh, Wild Brawl is going to be this one, nice and easy. And steal the show. Probably that one, to be honest. Does CM Punk have much high high flying ability? Not really. But I think this might steal the show. Let me chuck that on there. Um, and I might even make that Ricky Steamboat. I actually really like that show. That's a good nitro. Um, and we're really advancing a lot of a lot of storylines there too. Uh, let's have Lowdown take on. Romeo and Skipper, I guess. Yeah, that works. Um, on the pre-show, just another win there for our, our team champions. Looking nice and good for next week, where they will also be involved. Uh, and then we'll have another tag team match. Let's run, actually, let's do a six-man. And let's have Vito, or we'll have Guido first, I guess. Guido, Vito, and Tracy. They can take on the faces of Kendrick, Holt, and Jet. Cool. 
And we'll give the win there to Guido. Uh, yeah, Guido, because he will be involved pretty heavily in the new year as well. Um, we might make that a tainted win. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll just make it decisive. Cool. All right, let's run the show. We've got Nitro here, week two. Uh, okay, we get a 57 rated pre show tag match, uh, six man tag, that is. We have Big Vito and Fully Blooded Italians defeating Brian Kendrick, Colt Cabana, and Jason Jett in 11.32 when Guido submitted Colt Cabana with a Boston Crab. And yeah, a little bit of ring rust there for Big Vito. Um, so apparently he needs a few more matches under his belt. Only getting a, a 32. Yeah, I got a very good initial rating though for his gimmick. So I do like that. Going to give him a, a small boost to Charisma. During matches and angles. Good stuff. And the second pre-show match here. Tag team match with our tag team champions. We get a 59 rating. Where we have Lowdown defeating Romeo and Skipper. In 12.08. When Chaz pinned Elix Skipper. With a diving leg drop. Delo carrying the match there as well. And some uh, excellent chemistry. For our, uh, our Romeo and Skipper tag team. And our announcing team as well. All right, we kick off Nitro with a 50 rated angle where we have Helms and Mysterio, um, big pops for both of them. Uh, but they're discussing their match backstage um, to begin Nitro, just a little backstage segment. Um, they're both faces, so they're, they're sort of having like a, a genuine discussion about who's going to sort of win the match. And uh, yeah, they're interrupted by Romeo and Skipper. Um, and we have a match that is now booked for next week's Nitro. Simple, easy, face versus face at the pay-per-view, teaming up against a, a heel uh, cruiserweight tag team as well. All right, we then go into an 87 rated angle with Jeff Jarrett and Diamond Dallas Page. Simple, easy, both unscripted, DDP real star. Apparently deserve better announcing in color commentary, so... There you go. Uh, that leads into DDP's match, which gets us a 65 rating there. We have DDP defeating Dean Jablonski in 621 by pinfall with a diamond cutter. A good match. Solid 65. Jablonski's pretty terrible at the moment. Um, definitely someone I would like to send to a developmental co company once we get one. So I think that's... Uh, Probably the next step there for Jablonski. We then move into a 74 rated angle where we have Mr. Canada himself, Lance Storm, uh, cutting a promo onto American Dragon, essentially stating that, you know, he needs to, to find himself a tag team partner if he wants to take on Team Canada at Starcade. Uh, Dragon comes out, big smile on his face with his mask over the top of it. Um, and looks pretty happy. I'm very happy with that segment there, though. Very solid 74 for Lance Storm. We then go into a 58-rated tag team match where we have the debut of Terry Funk, or the re-debut, once again. And we have American Dragon and Terry Funk defeating Young Dragons in 543 when American Dragon submitted Jimmy Yang. Uh, Terry Funk with only a 40 in-ring. Um, debuts his grizzled veteran gimmick initial rating of very good as well nice um, and just penalized for losing to a comedy gimmick which we don't know if we really have many comedy gimmicks in WCW at the moment uh, but yeah good match solid 53 entering there for American Dragon as well we then go into a 77 rated angle with Los Guerreros um, and they discuss the big main event tonight. Of course, RVD teaming up with Booker T to take on Eddie Guerrero and Canyon in the main event. And yeah, they uh, they discuss a little plan backstage in their locker room, and uh, they essentially you know tell the cameraman to to get out while they're discussing their plan of what's going to go down. We then go into a seventy three rated match. Very. Very good match there, Wild Brawl. Uh, we have Sean O'Hare defeating PCO in 536 by pinfall with a Senton Bomb. I believe that's a 73. 
for for these two. I know O'Hare's popularity is starting to get into that upper mid card level, uh, but PCO is still unrecognizable. So he's still in in that lower mid card level. Um, yeah, they just both have really good brawling stats, I guess. Um, we move into a 72 rated angle where we have Jerry Lawler. And uh, he wants Sean O'Hare to align himself with Lawler's new stable. Got Lawler wrong there. Um, yeah, wants him to join the kingdom. The kingdom hasn't officially been announced yet. Uh, but he does want Sean O'Hare to be the first member. Sean O'Hare gets on the mic and says he, he's not interested. He doesn't want any part of, of a stable. He's, uh, he's waiting for Palumbo to return. And, uh, of course, Palumbo being his, uh, his current tag team partner that is on the shelf. Um, yeah, the segment deserved better color commentary, which I find very interesting because, obviously, Jerry wasn't in it. And it was just uh, Joey Styles and Shivani. All right, we then move into a 53-rated angle where we have Johnny the Bull, Little Guido, Big Vito, and Tracy Smothers. Um, our fully blooded Italians stable, essentially. Uh, but we still have Johnny being a face. He's almost there. He's almost fully turned to the dark side. Um, and yeah, Big Vito's come in as a, a bit of protection. Of course, Johnny the Bull is essentially being targeted, or he feels like he's being targeted by Hugh Morris. We go into Hugh Morris's match, which gets us a 58. We have Morris defeating Jamie Noble in 615 by pinfall with a moonsault. Then during the match, we also had Big Vito distract Morris, which uh, which almost led to an upset victory there for Noble. Um, but Morris, you know, it was able to, to fight back and uh, recover to get the, the one, two, three. Uh, we followed that up with an angle, getting a 49. Apologies, had to sneeze there. Uh, so 49 rated, we got Hugh Morris cutting a promo onto Big Vito. Uh, they go back and forth and... Yeah, Morris challenges Vito to a match next week on Nitro. Vito accepts, and uh, we have another match booked. So, Hugh Morris taking on Big Vito one on one, but likely to have fully blooded Italians getting involved in some way, shape, or form. We then go straight into a 51 rated angle with our fourth competitor, I guess, or newly newly fourth competitor for the World TV title. Uh, coming out of retirement uh, with Vader, CM Punk, AJ Styles, and Samoa Joe. Uh, these three rated on entertainment, which is good. Obviously, Vader on Menace for this angle. Does relatively well, relatively well. Uh, we then go into a 65 rated match where we have CM Punk defeating Super Crazy in 630 by pinfall with a top rope pedigree. And yeah, what an interesting match. Um, essentially, it didn't really finish the way I wanted it to. I wanted it to... Did I go decisive with it? I might have accidentally put it decisive. I did. So yeah, that needed to be tainted there. I've uh, I messed that up a little bit. Uh, but that was going to be the end as the finish. So in our heads, it wins with a, a top rope pedigree. As a result of psychosis getting involved in the match. Um, as it did. He, he technically did get involved in the match. Um, but the way that the game works is if you have it as decisive, it's not going to have that be the finish. Um, but he still got involved in the match, if that makes sense. Um, we might turn him now. Um... All right, took a little bit, little bit of a risk there. Um, the turn was a complete success. That was only after five segments as well. Um, so yeah, what we'll do for next episode is we're going to have the debut of Psycho Ripper, and uh, a new mask will essentially be debuted for, for Psychosis. He's going to take off the Psychosis mask. Underneath, going to be the black Psycho Ripper mask, whatever mask he has. Um, I imagine it'd be like all black with like blood over it. And just really, really cool and really intimidating as well at the same time. Good match though. 
Uh, we go straight into a tag team match here. We get a 58 rating for. Got the Rhodes family defeating Lash LaRue and David Flair in 622 when Dusty submitted David Flair. And yeah, Dustin head and shoulders about everybody else in the match. Good match. Again, momentum for Dusty uh, going into that world tag team title match at Starcade. So yeah. Um, like I said, I think next week I want to do Dustin versus D'Lo. I think that'd be a really good match. All right, we then go into a 97 rated angle. Booker T and Rob Van Dam backstage together just before going out for their match. Um, Booker T looked good. Uh, RVD did not do well without a script to follow. So a little bit of a penalty there. Still a 97 rated angle though. The, uh, the old Booker T effect. Uh, lovely stuff. Anyway, that's really good leading into the main event. Should be a really good main event. I know it's going to take a, it's going to have a little penalty um, purely for the fact that we're keeping Booker strong as a result of it. So, yeah. Main event time. Oh, yes. You know, I love to see the 85. Absolutely love to see the 85. Main event, 85 rated. Solid match. We've got Canyon and Eddie Guerrero. Defeating Booker T and Rob Van Dam, 1608, when Eddie Guerrero pinned RVD with a frog splash, frog, frog splash, following interference from Chavo Guerrero Jr. Just a good match overall. 88 in-ring performance for RVD, one higher than Booker T, and then two higher than Canyon. The RVD is essentially outperforming our world champion and one of our number one contenders. It is safe to say that RVD at this point in time is a bona fide main eventer um, purely for the fact that, you know, the, the stats don't lie, essentially. So very happy to, to finish on this match. And we'll take a little look at the, uh, the dirt sheet here. I mean, it's just, it's just really good. Done to a very hot crowd. Obviously, we get the, the penalty there for the personal issues. Um, and we also get the penalty for the low experience for the announced team, which is a little bit frustrating, but, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, it is outbalanced by the announcer chemistry that we have as well. So, yeah. Good match. Drop a like if you are happy with an 85-rated main event for this show. We'll, uh, we'll finish the show here. We'll get the overall show rating. I'm thinking it's probably going to be... 86 maybe 84 to 86 is my guess somewhere in that that two point region 86 oh spot on spot on i'm getting better and better at uh at predicting these these match or the, the show ratings i guess uh so 86 for nitro week two in the lead up uh we've got rob van dam outperforming everybody which is probably the uh the title of this video now that I think about it, now that I'm recording it. Um, RVD, above Booker T in ring. That's um, it's just unexpected, honestly. I'm really surprised. Uh, but overall, I think that's a really, really good show. You know, some of the matches were a little on the low side, like the Noble 58. Um, I was happy with the, the, the Punk Super Crazy. Very happy with the O'Hare. PC. Actually, looking at that, the match ratings are actually good. 65 there with uh, Jablonski involved. Um, Terry Funk, American Dragon, that, that's a 58 as well. So our lowest match rating was both the Tag Team 58 there and the Hugh Morris, Jamie Noble singles match 58, uh, as well as the three main event match as well, actually. Also getting a 58 uh, with the Rhodes family. So yeah. Good stuff. I, I really think that was a, a solid show. Lots of storyline progression as well. Which is, of course, very important. Uh, we'll take a look at Raw. Also pulling an 86. Okay. They did get a 99 rated match, though. Triple H and The Undertaker defeating Kane and The Rock in a tables match. Um, and then you got Billy Gunn defeating Taz also in a tables match. For the WWF Hardcore title. Interesting. And yeah. Kurt Angle defeating Steve Blackman in an 85. Which is 
essentially the the rating we got for our main event yeah happy to draw happy to draw billy gun new hardcore champion good to see they actually had a somewhat hardcore match being a tables match uh but what have we got okay so we've actually completed our warming up period after rising to to big size so we're essentially eligible to be included in area battles now um which i'm assuming is going to be with the wwf uh we also get a 1.50 tv rating which is good good stuff um didn't go up any size which is perfectly fine we don't have to to be going up every time um in fact the us doesn't really matter anymore that we're above you know the 77 required uh, it's pretty much canada and mexico um that we need to focus on and obviously it's going to be canada because we're a lot closer um despite now getting you know more popularity across mexico british isles all these other regions um, we're very over in australia and new zealand so happy with that as i am australian so there we go uh let's take a little look i want to look at big veto uh did not increase in popularity which is a little bit frustrating uh american dragon i don't know if he increased in popularity either he's gone up one point across all regions which is okay CM Punk's taken a, a good a good solid increase there. Um hopefully not too much at the expense of Super Crazy. Uh but he's up to 32s, 33s, um, even a 36 there for the southeast, which I do like. Um let's actually take a take a look at Super Crazy. He lost a bit. He's up his yeah, that's that's a bit of a rough trade-off, actually. I don't know if I like that. Because he was well in the in the 40s here. 42s, 43s. Now he's back down to 38, 39s. It's a, it's a loss of about three three to four points at the at the gain of CM Punk for the for about the same. Um Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's a that's a weird one. Uh no real increase there for Guido, despite the angle that he had, so a little unfortunate but probably not too far off um looking at cm punk again is he now is still unimportant by the fans see that's the issue that is the, the big issue at the moment uh we need to look at booker t though real quick still at 87 so keeping him strong worked didn't lose any popularity as a result of the uh losing or part of the team that he lost with RVD. So RVD is not going to really lose any points. He's, uh, uh, he actually did lose points. He lost two points. Huh. Yeah, he lost like one, one to two points. Interesting. Yeah, that, that's a weird one, actually. That, that is a weird one. Um, let's have a look at Eddie. Where are we? Eddie, 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 Eddie. Up to 78. Very, very good. It's up about four or five points since the start of the month. Uh, Anion, still the same. He's up a little bit. He's up to 75s pretty much across the board, which is actually quite nice. Uh, but yeah, Eddie, Eddie's popularity pushing out a little bit. Interesting one. Makes it uh, very interesting to see who's actually going to win that world title. Whether Booker retains it, Eddie wins it, or Canyon wins it. Um, it's still, um, I, I think I've made my decision with, with who's going to do it, even before uh, the increase to Eddie's popularity just there. I've made my decision. I'm going to stick with it. I'm also going to go black screen for it when we're booking it uh, for the big pay-per-view episode as well. Uh, just so you guys have a have a little bit of a surprise waiting in the wings. Of course, I've given away a few things in relation to, to what's sort of happening with the pay-per-view. Uh, but I want to leave that main event for the world title 
I want to leave that up in the air for you guys a little bit. Something to look forward to. And maybe you will be surprised. Maybe not. Maybe not. And uh, maybe that's me attempting to throw you off. Or maybe it's not. And maybe that's exactly what's going to happen. I have no idea. Anyway, what I am happy about is today's episode. Uh, it's been a good one. Drop a like if you've enjoyed, if you got this far. If you haven't got this far, um, drop a comment down below on your current thoughts about AEW. Um, I'm tempted to actually make a video um, sort of discussing AEW. Um, so let me know if you, you'd like to see something like that. Maybe more of a discussion or sort of like a podcasty feel type video with me giving my thoughts on the, the current situation of the the wrestling landscape um, as well as I've been thinking about maybe doing some videos on some Australian related professional wrestling stuff as well. The Australian wrestling scene is it's had a big bit of a big resurgence in recent like recent years. I think from about 2018, obviously through COVID, it sort of, you know, it had to die down as well. Um, but, but right now I think it's, it's back at a, a really good peak. Um, and there's a lot of companies out there. Um, I recently went to Melbourne two years ago to watch the MCW PWA Coliseum tournament over two nights. Um, had a little trip away by myself. Just went by myself to the to both shows. Really good. Met up with um, with some of the the wrestlers there as well um, after that second night. Um, was talking to guys like Tommy Knight, if you guys know him. Um, incredible wrestler. Really good good bloke as well. Um, we actually had a beer together, and um, yeah, he then went on to to go work for Noah, which is really cool. Um, and he's still doing some really good work in Australia as well. Um, yeah, I'll be going to, to shows in the future as well, some PWA shows. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll do some Australian wrestling uh, discussion videos or podcasty type videos in the future as well. Anyway, like I said, drop a like if you enjoyed today's episode and subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, apart from that, as always, take it easy and goodbye.